Magnus in Sweden. And I have to chuckle because Magnus happens to be the first name in my sci-fi, well, it's not sci-fi, but it's more adventure series, Emians. For those of you that have read some of the books, I am working on book three. We're getting close and it's going to be a killer, which is the follow-up to book one of Emians. In it, you're going to meet our protagonist, Sam Sawyer. He's the one that went down into the Emian pyramid under the Antarctic ice with Julia. Well, she didn't go, but she meets him later and found the Emian secret and pretty cool stuff. Well, Sam's father, his name is Magnus. And wait till you see what Magnus has up his sleeve. <laughs> Sorry, I had to borrow your name. Okay, Mag the real Magnus writes to me and he says, Hi, Paul. Thank you for your great and educational videos. My pleasure, sir. I really love them. Thank you. Uh, I've read that your new PS Audio Air Lens has galvanic isolation to reduce noise. Could you explain a little how that works and how it is implemented in the Air Lens? It's okay if you get a little technical. Best regards, Magnus. Sure. Galvanic isolation basically means that there is no physical or electrical connection between two sides of a circuit. And one of the best and most effective ways to galvanically isolate something is with fiber optic. So you've seen a toss link cable. That is the epitome of galvanic isolation. There is no electrical, there is no physical connection. Everything is just connected via light. And that is a great way to, to go. So it doesn't matter how noisy over here this is, that noise, if it's electrical noise, isn't going to get over to here. Now, having said that, if the noise, if on a fiber, if the noise is inherent in the signal, then even a fiber optic is going to pass it. So that's a little bit more about where, what we do that's special. Okay. So Galvanic isolation, again, is when we do, there's no physical or electrical connection between the two. You're connecting via light, which is a fiber optic, or the way we do it because of the speeds and the two-way communication that we have to have. We could have done it with optic, but anyway, there's a whole bunch of reasons why we didn't because we just don't like the what's available out there. So we do it using something kind of like radio waves, if you will. And the electrical signals, electromagnetic signals that jump across a pretty thin, small, maybe that far of a gap, okay? Little radio transmitter and receiver and the same over here that goes between the two. It's very low powered, probably doesn't go more than a quarter of an inch. All right, so that's number one. And then we have separate power supplies. So the output stage has its own power supply and ground, and the input stage has its own power supply and ground. All right, now, we have disconnected all kind, any kind of ground noise, any of that stuff in the air lens, disconnected. The next step is what you'd have to do even if you use fiber optics. And that is when the noise is inherent in the digital data stream, you have to get rid of that too. And you do that by reclocking. Okay? We've, we were the ones that invented the digital lens we certainly didn't invent a FIPO buffer, which is what it is. And a FIPO is first in, first out, okay? So it's pretty kind of simple. That data stream and the clocks, I mean, so there's a number of them because they're all separate. You got separate clocks, s separate data streams, all those lines, each one has to be separately isolated on a separate line with its own digital lens or buffer to, to eventually get out to do its thing, okay? We fill up the digital well. We put it into a holding tank, if you will. Now, once you do that, only the digits themselves are kept. The, the little noise and things that we would have transmitted along that is coming out of wherever you're sending the stuff, that goes away. We don't capture that. So. That's the first step. Now we have it inside of this big holding tank. It's clean, digital, no electrical connection with the input and the output. Then using a very, very low noise 
extremely accurate and stable fixed oscillator, pump, pump, pump at whatever frequency, knocks that out of that buffer, and that's what goes into your DAC. And that's how we get rid of the noise completely. Well, nothing's perfect, but you, you get the idea. So I hope that wasn't too technical. Tried to keep it simple, but that's, that's how we do it. Okay. Thanks. Take it easy. <laughs> Bye.